Hello there adventurers and welcome to Wall ADM. Today our adventuring party needs to get across an acid pit. Now if they follow the correct path and jump from stone to stone they're going to be just fine. However if they don't know what the correct path is and try to just go for it then they're going to take in an enormous amount of damage and they're going to have to try again. Today we're going to take a look at a puzzle that you can find in Treacherous Traps by Nord Games and this one's called Aquatic Allies. Before we get started with the video, I'd just like to ask you to subscribe to the channel. It really encourages me to make more videos. Also, if you have not joined our Wall ADM Discord, head on over there now and join us. We have great conversations going on all the time. And don't forget to pick up my D&D puzzle book, Wall ADM's Journal of Puzzle Encounters, available now on Drive-Thru RPG. Now let's get started with the video. So this puzzle is going to comprise of two different rooms. Our characters are going to enter from this door over here. And this first room they're going to find is a large acid pit. Now floating in this big pool of acid are a bunch of different stones. So those are going to be identified as these purple squares. Now these stones are about three feet wide, but there's just enough room for a character to stand on it. Now this green area here is acid. There are no stones in this area. Now our characters want to get over here to this door eventually, and they're going to need to travel across here. So they're going to need to find a safe path. Now there are some sconces here that are going to provide some light, so the first part of this is well lit with the sconces. The characters can also see that there is an open door over here to the west, and if they were to peer into that next room over, they're going to see what looks like a wizard's study or a wizard's den. Now if our characters try to get across this, there's going to be a few things that they're going to need to keep in mind. First, if they try to run across here, let's say our barbarian just goes in a full rage and just tries to run across these, this is very difficult terrain. And if he steps on an incorrect stone, he's going to just sink that stone immediately and go right into the acid. Now I would highly recommend that once someone falls into the acid, that we roll a ton of damage. We don't want to kill the character, but we want them to know that this acid is deadly and they're going to need to find the correct path because one too many slips into the acid pool and they're not going to make it. They're just going to be baked down to a skeleton. Now as far as the walls are concerned, these are very slick with the exception of portholes. Now these portholes are just going to shoot acid and the purpose of that is to try to deter anyone from trying to spider climb. Again, this wall is very slick. There are no nooks and crannies, just these portholes. And if they try to spider climb across here, acid is just going to stream and shoot across. And once again, they're just going to take a ton of damage and they're going to need to try to get back to safety. I would also do the same thing with characters with flying. If they try to fly across, they'll only get this far when all of this acid is just going to shoot across the walls. It's going to blow them back potentially this way, and they're going to take a ton of damage. And anything we can do to try to deter them from flying or spider climbing across. Now, I do think a spell like Misty Step, where they can teleport 30 feet across, would be absolutely fine. So if this druid has Misty Step, they can step across and be able to get that way. But they're friends are still trapped on the other side. So what the characters are going to need to do is go across these stones in the correct pattern. Now if our characters come out to this first block, let's say our fighter comes out here, he is going to be safe. This first block is fine, but he's also going to notice that it's very wobbly, so he's going to need to keep his balance, and it seems like he could sink at any time. Now if he steps out here, this is actually one of the correct ones in the path, so our fighter is going to be fine once again, but he kind of just did a little leap step up to this next stone. He's balancing on it just fine. Again, they're probably about three feet in diameter, and he's kind of just hanging there. Now let's say if our fighter goes here again, and he's going to sink the stone as soon as he steps on it. He's going to go right into the acid, and the only way for him to get out is to come back to the previous stone that was safe. So he's going to need to climb back out here and that's going to be after he takes an amazing amount of damage. And again, the purpose of all of this damage they're taking is not to try to kill the characters, but trying to make them realize that they can't spider climb across, they can't fly across, and they need to find out their correct pattern to get across because just trying to guess at random is not going to work and they're going to die before they get to the end. So hopefully our characters realize that they're going to need to explore around a little bit and find the correct pattern or a clue that'll help them get across. So now we're going to lead our characters this way and go into the wizard's study. 
So now our characters are in this wizard's study and they can take a minute to look around and see if they can find some things that are going to help them. Now it's up to you as the dungeon master if there's anything else that you'd like for there to be in this bookcase, on this table, in these boxes or crates. That is of your own choosing. But our most important thing is going to be this fishbowl over here and we'll explain a little bit more in just a bit. Now the strangest thing about this room is there is a 10 foot square opening that is cut out in the middle of this room. And as soon as they come in here, they can hear the sounds of water lapping. And if they're to come over and look at this, let's say our artificer comes over to take a glance and they look into this pool, they're going to be able to see that this is actually a pool. This goes down into some water and the water is fairly clear. So it's at this point, we're going to allow a perception check for anyone looking down into the pool. And if they succeed on that and let's make that easy probably a dc 10 or 12 then they're going to see a bunch of fish that are swimming about and as they're watching these fish that are swimming about in the pool they're going to see a few fish that give off some type of luminescent glow so the whole key is for these characters to explore down into this pool of water. Now to get them down there, you could say that they see a treasure chest or something. Maybe that will have the characters trying to dive down to see what they can find. Or you can just allow them a DC 15 intelligence check. And if they succeed, then you can tell them that their character feels like there are probably a few clues down there and they should probably submerge down into the water and see what they could find. Let's say our druid decides to wild shape into some type of a swimming animal and dives down into the water. So now that our druid is down inside the pool, he's going to be swimming with all kinds of different fish. They're all going to be friendly and things of that nature, but there are a few of them that are luminescent koi. And when he witnesses a few of the luminescent koi go across the wall of the pool, he's going to notice that their luminescent light actually reveals a set of eight runes. And it's at this point, if the player hasn't already figured it out, then we could allow our druid a nature check. And if they succeed on that, let's just set it very low, a DC 10 or DC 12, then they could probably come to the conclusion that these luminescent koi, if they could light up these runes here, perhaps these runes mean something, or if they were to take this luminescent koi with them, perhaps it will reveal more hidden languages, more hidden runes, or better yet, maybe a hidden passage. So our characters now have everything they need to get across the acid pit. With everything that's been explained and the information given, do you know how to solve the puzzle? I'll give you a second if you'd like to figure it out. Did you get it? Great! Let's go over the answer. Now our druid could pop back up out of this pool and let his party members know that the luminescent koi in the pool are revealing some hidden writing. And with that, our artificer over here could come over and grab this empty fishbowl and send it down to the druid. So our druid now has the empty fishbowl and we could probably do an animal handling check to see if he can get at least one of the luminescent koi inside the fishbowl. With at least one of the luminescent koi secured in the fishbowl, our druid can now swim back up to the top of the pool. So our druid re-emerges from the pool and he has a luminescent koi in the fishbowl and he also has the information of the runes that he's seen written on the wall underneath the water. So now if our characters take the luminescent koi and this information and go back to the acid pit room, they should be able to use this to help them get across the acid pit, but they still don't see anything. And this, at this point as a DM, you can tell them that the luminescent koi, even though it's in the fishbowl, it's giving off some ultraviolet light, but unfortunately it's still too bright in here. And with that, you could have them extinguish the sconces on the wall. And if anyone has torchlight lit, they need to extinguish that as well. And when they do, the black light from the luminescent koi in the fishbowl gives off just enough light where the characters can see the first rune being this first step. So if our druid takes and steps on this rune, and then as the koi is still in the fishbowl, they can just move it around a little bit. They can see that there's nothing there, nothing there. Oh, there's the next rune, so they can step over to this one. And then looking around in their general direction, they find the next room so they can step over to this one. And utilizing the luminescent koi in the fishbowl, it's going to continue to give off that light. They can find the runes and in the correct order. And now that they're all safely on the other side, they can open the door and successfully continue on with their adventure. So that is Aquatic Allies, and you can find that puzzle in Treacherous Traps by Nord Games. If you'd like to pick up your own copy, I'll put a link in the description below. Now with regards to the puzzle as it's written in the book, I kind of deviated away from it a little bit. I kind of made the puzzle how I would run it in a game. So if you're reading it in Treacherous Traps, it's going to be just a little bit different than what you've seen here today. 
Now, a couple fun things that the book says is if the luminescent koi are taken out of water for any reason whatsoever, they're going to shrivel up and die, and they're no longer going to be able to give off that luminescent light. Another fun thing that the book has mentioned is perhaps once the characters have the luminescent koi, they can keep it as pets, or as you go further along in the dungeon, perhaps the luminescent koi will be able to find more secret passages or more hidden runes. Now, with regards to revealing runes, that was something that I added to the puzzle, and I'm almost thinking we could make a red herring about it. Perhaps we have another room where there's a bunch of runes, and the characters are trying to move them around or what have you. But little do they know that the runes are just invisible writing in the acid pit room. So that's all I have for you today. What did you think of the puzzle? Is this something that you could use in your game? And if so, what would you do differently? I'm looking forward to your feedback on this and how you would use it in your game. Thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you in the next video and on to the next.